Welcome back. We're here to continue the day one broadcast of the Hearthstone Thailand Major from the Pan Tip Esports Arena in Bangkok. I'm Maren, and with me this time is D2. How are you feeling? And what, have you, what are your thoughts of the game so far today? Going pretty well so far. I had a quick 3-0, and then after that, a couple uh, nice 3-2s. Yeah. Um, we just saw the match that you guys are going to see in about 10 minutes. You know this thing. Obviously, <laughs> a bit of a production delay, but uh, looking... I really wanted to see Twitch chat response to the last game, but it was yeah. pretty insane, that ending there. Yeah, for and, sure. And, uh, yeah, it was... Yeah, can't ask for more in these types of games. But, uh, yeah, we have a good one coming up here. It's mm -hmm. going to be Chani from Vietnam versus Pork My Pig who's a Malaysian player on Team M8. Sorry, I didn't mention that Chani is from Flying Falcon. Here is our bracket, or excuse me, our schedule. By the way, going to continue with that round of 64 and uh, keep continuing with the upper bracket throughout the day. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we have these uh, two players. And Chani, by the way, was voted in by, or excuse me, she was nominated first because she won a Gosu Cup, one of the, or the only female player to win a Gosu Cup, beating Waning Moon in the finals. And then... Because of her win there, she got nominated to uh, as one of the players that people voted on to get a free trip here. And she actually won that vote. Yeah. The, the uh, community voted her in, so she got a free trip to Thailand. Pretty nice. Nice. Courtesy of Blizzard, of course. Actually, talking about Waning Moon, Waning Moon has actually had the potential of, of versing Chani in this uh, round, actually. But Pork My Pig actually beat him. To, I think, to be in this situation? I think Wayne Moon just chickened out. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> He's just like, it was a 3-2. Uh, both of them won 3-2 in the first round. And yeah, I, I believe Waning Moon got to 2-2. He's like, you know what? It's good. I don't want to be uh, get schooled by Chani once more like I lost <laughs> in the finals. No, obviously we're joking. But uh, you definitely wanna, don't want to be going to the lower brackets. You still have a chance, but you're going to be have to winning. You're going to have to be winning, excuse me, several more matches in order to get to yeah. the money. Or, the, yeah, and the point as well. Yeah, the pressure is really on when you know you've only got one life left. If you lose, you're out for sure. And especially for, you know, the more known players like Waiting Moon. Like, they, they're the guys who who are expected to do well in this tournament. Like, being in, in the loser bracket, the lower brackets, excuse me, this early on is definitely something that they did not want to have happen here. And looks like we have the bands ready to go. Both guys banning the shaman out of their opponent. Guy and Grill, in this case, if I go with uh, Twitch speak for just a moment here. But yeah, the Shaman is going to be going away. And we do have the deck list, obviously, that we, men we mentioned this before, but all the players have access to all the deck lists. As we take a look at, I believe this is Pork, or that, that is not Chani, unless Chani <laughs> turned into a male all of a sudden. She is, that is her correct country. So I think we have our players are mixed up. There is Chani, and I believe the other player was Pork My Pig here. So, yeah, Chani, she did win a Gosu Cup, and like we mentioned, she defeated Wayne Moon in the final there, and she's already won her first round here, so continuing to put up pretty decent results. And uh, let's talk about the Shaman since we're not going to actually be seeing them. It's actually taking a look at our notes here. They were both uh, Totem Shamans, mm -hmm. and... Right, yeah, there were, uh, no, excuse me, it was uh, Pork had, I think, he had um, yeah, the an al al alchemist in there. No, he, Pork had a had a normal aggro shaman. Yeah. And we had Chani with the totem shaman, okay. except she didn't have the wicked witch doctor. Right. So uh, a couple of different decks that were banned out here, even though they're the same class. But uh, what we're left is the hunter, druid, and paladin for Chani. Bit of an interesting choice with the paladin. And for Pork, we have druid, hunter, and warrior. So yeah. I think it's the first paladin of the day. What do you think about that? It's pretty interesting. Only 17 people have brought uh, a paladin to this tournament out of the 128 players. So she must definitely feel confident in, in her ability to play this this deck and in, in her knowledge of, of all the, the possible matchups that are going to be coming up here. Yeah, absolutely. And Paladin's a weird deck, right? Because it kind of acts like pre-standard priest in a way. Yeah. Because, you know, given the right cards, you can beat almost anything. But right. it's just, you know, getting those draws, obviously. And we're going to go into game number one here. It looks like we have a Hunter Mirror, not something we see every single day. And one of the interesting texts of Chani's deck is actually that Scavenging Hyena that we see in her opening hand. One thing that's interesting, actually, is that both players are running a single 5-drop in the Tundra Rhino. But other than that, there's no 5-drops. And both players, similar decks in this regard. Mm, got they're probably gonna have to be relying on having, you know, a three drop and a two drop or something like that on that turn five. But uh, scavenging hyena, I mean, I guess it makes sense. There's so many more beasts in the in the meta right now that having that synergy could be pretty nice here. 
Yeah, absolutely. Especially because the entire deck is composed of beasts here. So yeah. Chani can actually just play the Hyena right now, turn that into a 4-3. However, it's a bit weak to something just like a quick shot. So we're going to yeah. go ahead and play the slower game, potentially get more value off this Hyena in the future. Uh, one thing to mention is that there is one Argent Squire in the entirety of Portmate Pig's deck. And there's also another Abusive Sergeant. So uh, able to get that one drop on turn one. Pretty nice for him. I'm going to go ahead and play the Kindly Grandmother now. And might we see the Scavenging Hyena right now? Kind of no other choice, really. Yeah, like, <laughs> do you really want a hero power here? Probably not. You could. It's not completely out of the question. Especially because there's ways for Portmate Pig to buff the Kindly Grandmother into the Scavenging Hyena. Sure. Obviously, if you trade the, or if you go for the value trade with the Toad, it's already a 3-2 that can trade into the 4-3. Mm -hmm. And it's just difficult all around. So Chani is just going to think about it. Uh, Leok allows the Kindly Grandmother to trade in. You can also just go oh, for yeah. a really weak Unleash the Hounds, which I, it's reasonable as well. But I would probably take my chance with the Animal Companion. Yeah, mm. always, always a nice turn three play, the Animal Companion there. Yeah, so this is, this is all things that Chani is thinking about. Obviously, we're talking about Pork My Pig's turn, but this is why Chani is hesitating here. She's wondering what the possibilities here are for Pork My Pig. And no. going to go ahead and choose to play the Scavenging Hyena and actually going to just, you know, take the trade here. She's she's going to give away... Oh, excuse me. Her, her own beast didn't die, so my, my mistake. I'm just kind of brain dead for a moment there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so just giving away the trade, realizing that it's worse to have the Kindly Grandmother get the value trade and then have the wolf left over. Yeah. So tough decision here, but she ends up going for the one that's a bit more safe. Ooh. Guess the Huffer? Huffer every time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Does need to trade into the Hyena, and this is probably going face, I would imagine. Yep. All right, Chani needs to pick up something right now. Does not, so this is going to be hero power, trade to the Huffer, and pass. Nothing else to yeah. do. She might bluff that she has something else, but nope, just going to go ahead. For the uh -huh. caster's sake, going to go ahead and play this out quickly. It's like, yeah, no, there's no there's no bluffing here. There's, if you no, don't, there's no mind games here. If you had something to play, you would play it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Infested Wolf off the top here. Great job for Portman Pig. Otherwise, it was just going to be Naked Houndmaster. And this can't be traded into with the Tundra Rhino. And this is the weakness of the Tundra Rhino. It's going to go face, and it's actually just going to die to the Houndmaster. If, and that's the like that's one of the options he has, right? He can even just go at Savannah High Main. I'd actually like to see a coin into Huge Toad, but I guess you want to save the coin for Call of the Wild. Yeah, getting that Call of the Wild one turn early is, is such a big deal. It's so hard to deal with the three bodies just suddenly bursting onto the field here. Yeah, this is a funny matchup because Hunter is a deck that if you get the early lead, you can really snowball and kill right. your opponent. But if you don't get the early lead, then it's the exact opposite, right? You just go to snowball in the pond because you can't really come back. Yeah. So when it's a Hunter versus Hunter matchup, it's just magnified. Whoever gets the early lead just wins the game. And Chani seemed to have an, the early advantage, but you know, when you turn for a pass, it just snowballs like this. And even if Chani starts throwing out kill commands to start clearing this board, you're facing down Call of the Wild. Next turn, your Call of the Wild doesn't really clear theirs because they can just go face afterwards. So looking like there's really nothing that Chani can do here, I would say. Yeah, I mean, she, you just kind of have to hope that your opponent doesn't have Call of the Wild in hand. Yeah, so assuming you don't have Call of the Wild, right? Yeah. It's just You're just tracking. You have to double kill command the minions on the board. I guess what Chani's thinking is... Okay, so if she kill commands the Infested Wolf, there is 12 and 14 damage on board with the hero power. If Portman Pig has zero damage, she can maybe go kill command face and then high main to the face and then just <laughs> put the opponent down to 12 life and maybe she picks something. It's one of these situations where she's so far behind that maybe she just needs to go for the desperation race. Yeah, it might actually be her no. best chance. Well, Eager Hole and Bow is the pickup. She can't physically facing five damage because she'll die. So she can't True, do that yeah. into the uh, wolf. Oh, does get the huffer, which is bad. nice. And just going to go face here. We do know that's the end of the game, though. <laughs> we were just doing hypotheticals. Right, yeah, yeah. We were just doing hypotheticals, yeah. but we do know that's the... Uh, oh, no, she actually just trade. Okay, so is this the end? Hold on. Five, seven, um, 12, and then plus four, uh, 16. I think he's one off, if I did my Ooh. math correctly. Maybe not. 12, 16, yeah. So 16 damage, but you, yeah, there's no way you die here. It's gonna trade anyway, though. I suppose you don't really. You, there's no way your opponent can recover the board anyway. Right. Just might as well play it super, super, super safe here. Yep. All right. Seven damage to the face. Chani can call the wild and trade into the Misha, but then she's dead on board. 
Right. So, yeah, this is going to be game number one going to Pork. It's kind of showing that she has that card. Or, excuse me, she's not dead on board, but um, yeah, it would be very hard for Chani to come back from this. Oh, but she is dead to Lindley Sands. Oh, yeah. yeah. Poor my pig, just making sure <laughs> 2 plus 2 is 4, and 9 plus 2 is more than 10. Math here <laughs> on Hearthstone SCA. Twitch.tv slash Hearthstone SCA, aka Math Class. I didn't know that more than 10 was, a, was an option, as an <laughs> answer. <laughs> Any, anything more than the amount of damage that your opponent has life left is going to get it done. True. Very true. So that's yeah, game number one over to Pork, and that means that he has a Druid and a Warrior left, as you can see on the screen right there. Thank you, Production. And uh, yeah, Chani still needs to win with her Hunter, Druid, and Paladin, so certainly a tough position for her, Yeah. because once you lose that mirror matchup, it can really snowball. Yeah, I mean, just look, looking at the decks left, Druid and Warrior, and considering that Chani's running Hunter, Druid, and Paladin herself, like, do you think any of, of these decks from Chani are going to be gonna have an advantage, or is it just going to be the standard stick to the deck you, you already played? Right. I think that she can definitely go for a Hunter again. It's not really too much of an underdog against either the, I believe this is Dragon Warrior. Yeah, it's this Dragon Warrior. And the Druid, which is basically just a normal token Druid. So it's reasonable against both. You can just go for that again. The Druid is also reasonable as well, depending on what, you, what your thoughts are on Druid versus the Dragon Warrior. She does have the token Druid as well, although it's a, it's a bit of a different... Uh, build. We'll get into that if we do see that. Yeah. And her, it's an Azoth Paladin. So, Azoth Paladin is reasonable against both of those decks as well. It's kind of just a, just a bunch of really close matchups here. It really yeah. comes down to the play. So, I think that's part of the reason why Chani brought these decks. It, there's really not the worst matchups kind of across the field. Mm. I mean, we've seen people do really well with the Azoth Paladin deck in the past. Like, uh, I believe it was Dreamhack Valencia. Yep, Evangelion. Yeah, he just tore through that open bracket, and then may maybe Johnny it was like ten and zero or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was yeah. ridiculous with that deck, and nobody was expecting that deck to even be to come up in that tournament. Like it wasn't really in in the meta very much. Right. People were kind of even avoiding that deck, and uh, it's a meta call, the yeah. the Nazoth Paladin, right. because it's kind of like the pre again going back to the pre standard priest, where you can really catch people off guard if you're expecting decks that are weak to it, then you can go ahead and bring it. But if your opponents are expecting you to bring it, they can count bring the counter, and all of a sudden you're in a bit of trouble. Yeah. All right, well, Tani seems to like mirrors. She went yeah. for... <laughs> she could have just, you know, guaranteed not gone another mirror, but she's going to go ahead and queue up her druid here. And now that we have this matchup, we can tell you the differences. Yeah, she's not actually running any arcane giants, right? Yeah, no arcane giants. Instead, she's replaced them with druid of the claw, which mm. is nice against a bit more aggressive decks. It can be reasonable in this matchup, too. You know, there's... You don't, you're not faced with that situation where you stuck with an Arcane Giant, but yeah. there's no huge swing turns later in the game. So we'll mm -hmm. see how that works out for here. Another uh, change is that she has uh, one Myra Keeper, one Raven Idol. And as for the side of Pork, he basically has as standard as you can get these days with uh, Scenarius, Nixia, Yogg, mm. and the you know, your standard Arcane Giants. Oof. I mean, both, both players here are getting at least one Innervate each. So... Uh, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the issue is how you kind of manage this. And on the side of Chani, she's already, she has essentially three pieces of ramp. So, you know, she needs to pick up some clunky cards, essentially. In her, <laughs> it's weird to, to say it that way, right? You don't really want clunky cards, because it's clunky is a bad word, yeah. right? But uh, you want something to fill out your curve, essentially, while you know, something into ramp into. She picks up a lot of cheaper cards, not going to be looking good for her. Yeah, Pork, on the other hand, pro I mean, has the option to innervate into uh, Force of Nature here. Getting those three si uh, two twos wouldn't be too bad at all. But looks oh. like with that draw on the Emperor Thorsane, she's going to, I mean, he's going <laughs> to yeah, <laughs> choose to throw that one out. Yeah, you could have gone for the Force of Nature, but play one more coin so you can get four coins into your hand, essentially. Yeah. And the nice thing about Emperor Thorsen is that, you know, even on top of the discounts that you get into your hand, you can also get tempo just by having it on the board. It seems very yeah. strange to say because he's a six mana five five. He's obviously understated for his cost and for, you know, pretty obvious reasons. But now Chani can't do anything. She has to kill yeah. the Thorsen. She can't develop any of her own minions. And so he's, he kind of gets, Ooh. wow. 
Okay, <laughs> I had to stop in my tracks there. That's a Merlot. <laughs> in any case, so you have to stop everything you're doing and kill that card unless you're willing to give your opponent basically four more coins. And so apart from all the discounts he's already given you, he gives you even more of you know a tempo swing just by having a minion on the board that you have to kill. Yeah, pulling your opponent off their game plan is just it's just such a big advantage. You know, like if if you're always playing reactively, it's uh, it's pretty hard to to kind of impose your own own game plan over your opponents. Just it's just not, not not a way to win a game. Yeah, absolutely. And Port My Pig, Ooh. he's getting closer and closer to getting the arcing joint. Could we see double innervate swipe here? It wouldn't be that preposterous, actually. I mean, considering what he, what he would have left in his hand, it's not too bad. He and Drake is kind of the same thing as Thorson in a way, right? Druid yeah. has such powerful spells to combo with the Drake that you'd be putting your opponent in the same position that you were last turn, essentially saying, you need to kill my Drake before yeah. you do anything yourself. Even the same with Fandral, actually. Yeah, like, well, <laughs> Fandral is the, the number one. Fandral, yeah. you can do some insane things, you know. I would say Fandral's number one, and then... Depending on how many cards they have in hand, you know, Drake and Thorson are pretty close to tied there. Yeah. But uh, Portman Pig says, you know what, no big deal. I'm just going to go ahead and play my Wrath for one, which means he can go ahead and innervate Arcane Giant. Seems pretty good. Pretty good math there by Portman Pig. Already had that in mind. I suppose he was sitting on that turn for a while, waiting for Tony to play her turn. Yeah. So he's like, all right, play some minions. Let, give me something to remove so I can play my Arcane Giant. Yeah. And the mulch was already pulled out by that Emperor, so. Yeah, absolutely. The answers are very limited here. And this is the issue, right? If From the beginning of the game, if Port Mike Pig could extend the game past the first few turns where Druid of Claw maybe provided a tempo swing for Chani, mm. if he could just not be in that much trouble, then the Arcing Giants really start pulling a lot of weight because you don't run more than one mulch in the deck. There's just no room. Yeah. And this is just going to be a joke. And Chani, oh. you can see in her face, she's like, really? You got a Murloc Knight? Or my biggest fail fishing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still a threat, right? You still have to kill the Murloc Knight, but then you still have to kill the Arcane Giant. So I don't think, you know, as much as he's fail fishing here, I don't think he's, uh, I think he's in a really good spot still. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can't yeah. even kill the Murloc Knight. You have to kill the huh? Arcane Giant, because that's eight damage to face every single turn. But the Pain Train rolls on. There's even the Power of the Wild here to buff up the Murloc Knight potentially to trade in. It's just kind of all sorts of trouble. Raven Owl is the pickup. Could go for actually a minion if he picks up a two drop. But let's see what he does decide to do. Well, we can't really see. And actually, we don't know if he went for minion or spell. Either is pretty reasonable. He does go for the swipe here. Oh, and can just nice. hear a power instead. Yep. Here we go. Let's see what kind of Murloc. Murloc Knight spawns this <laughs> he time. He gives the nod of approval. It's <laughs> like, okay, a 2-3. Not, not anything crazy, but, you know, just yeah. for a hero power, you pick up a, a 1.5 drop, essentially. Hmm. And uh, Chani is a bit under the gun here. Doesn't really know what to do. Uh, I think Scenarius is probably the strongest just to get the most power out on the board. After that, you can go Vital Teacher. Typically, you want to just get the temple first and then draw cards. If you draw cards first, you're really, you know, forced yeah. to over react to what your opponent's doing. Well, the good news for Chani, even though we're going to have uh, Hero Power into probably double Power of the Wild for three drops, that's not too bad. You can get a 3-5 yeah. uh, Vile Fin Inquisitor. But um, the good news for Chani is that there's no, you know, yaw craziness uh, yet here from Port Pig. He has Scenarius, but he's behind on mana Then you know, if you're Chani. So you can go ahead and maybe clear some stuff off before that starts getting out of control. Oh, it goes for the Panther first. Interesting. Okay. Decides to go wide more than tall here. Right, yeah. The 5 6 more like Knights already going to be targeted anyway. So I, I suppose this makes sense. It's hard for the Chani to do this here. And there the Drew of the Claw. I figure she probably has enough spells to have already played an Arcane Giant, so. Not, that decision is not working out too great for here. Does pick up the Ancient of War, though. And putting up Taunt after Taunt after Taunt could. Yeah. Allow her to get back into this game. Great way to buy some time here for herself. Maybe get that Yogg in play eventually. The, th the funny thing is that if that was a different card off of Mulch, then oh, yeah. Chani would have been... Even if it was something you know threatening like a, a six drop or something, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be these two Murlocs on the board that you'd yeah, have to deal with. Uh, actually, Chani's thinking about going for Vile Teacher Living Roots here. Uh, either is pretty viable. She's not really worried about Yogg quite yet. 
And yeah, it's certainly reasonable to, to think about that, especially because, you know, obviously, you know, there's no combo anymore. So there's nothing crazy that's going to kill you. There we go. Just go straight to the claw taunt. Put, you know, put a body between uh, the, the minions and yeah, Scenarius. It gets a bit punished here, though, because yeah. now the 6-5 Panther's going to trade pretty <laughs> nicely into that. Going to get the Inquisitor, who is actually going to value trade with Scenarius. You don't see that every day. <laughs> Well, you don't see any Morlocks really value trading with Scenarius <laughs> every day. That's a pretty good draw, though. So now he can go for Wrath for one, Living Roots, and onto the Panther. Mm -hmm. Obviously killing off the Valf and Inquisitor. Go for the Ancient of War, and that puts a nice blocker. It does die to the board, but you're leaving behind a 5-3, essentially. And, you know, really that's all you have to deal with from there on going forward. So looks like that is going to be the play for her. Yeah, Chani and really needs to buy some more time here. It's just the pressure's really piling on. Although Pork doesn't have that many more minions. Although it draws <laughs> on Nixia. Oh. Wow. Well, if he does pick up removal here, it's a really big deal because he might be able to get some damage to face, save part of his scenario, so it's harder to die. That is not it. Looks like he's going to Wrath for one, it looks like. there's if mm. you He can't Wrath for three and get a better trade, so... no. Looks like he's just going to draw here. It makes sense. You might as well see what your next card is, especially because Yogg and Anixia can't be played with Wrath, so he's going to see what his future options are. There is oh, a Drake. Okay. Yeah, that works out pretty well for him. So more threats on the table. And obviously gets to draw that card. And he picks up a Vile Teacher as well, so Chani's certainly under the gun. She doesn't know that if she plays Nixia, she's not going to die. Neither are her whelps going to be cleared, at least as we can see from Port My Pig's side. You know, mm -hmm. Yogg shenanigans notwithstanding. But it's hard to make that call. It's it's very yeah. tempting to just put a blocker up and drew the club. But that is your last taunt. Sometimes you want to make the the power play first before you put up a taunt as a last result. Because from now on, she doesn't really have any blockers except for the last Ancient of War. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen... We've only seen one s swipe from Pork, right? Like, he got one from the Raven Idol, so he's used two, but he's still got one left. Right. So I guess... Yeah, Portman Pig really has afraid. seen already one Ancient of War. Uh, he's He knows there's an Anixia. He knows there's a Yogg. So he can really just push damage to face here. Get his opponent down to four if he goes Vile Teacher, Mulch, and Hero Power. Mm -hmm. And make it difficult for the opponent, especially with no board. And looks like he's just going to go for that. Feels like, you know, Yogg's too risky. Anixia, he can just do that after his board gets cleared by Yogg. And yeah, just going to put maximum pressure on. I'm ready to I imagine this is all going face. Yeah. Chani certainly is going to do the trading for you. That's a high main. That would be really nice if she wasn't about to die. Right. All right, so can Chani stay alive is the question. Right now, she can't. Yeah, she needs to draw Yogg, I suppose. That's... You can draw into more stuff, and she kind of just has to. Yeah. And as Port My Pig, you feel pretty good about this. You're like, okay, you're spending five mana just to draw into yeah. answers. There's a swipe, so that's useful. That's okay. also useful. Yeah. So she, I think she's still alive. Just uh, looking at the trades here for a moment. Uh, she can go ahead and yeah, she can swipe the Drake, and slime into the Scenarius and Living Roots. The Violet Teacher. That's a clear board, but your board is also clear, and your opponent has Anixia and Yogg. So, <laughs> good news, bad news here for Johnny. <laughs> You're live. Yeah, and seeing this this final swipe come out of Chania as well, Pork is gonna feel very comfortable playing that Enix, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately she doesn't have good trades here at all. She no. just has to trade everything in and play Living Roots. Just barely holding on, just hoping your opponent doesn't have the yeah. final blows. Hope you hope your opponent has Living Roots and Wrath, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the daughter of Deathwing. And she Ooh. might actually just have no way to come back from this. Oh, oh never mind. There we go. That's the only play here. All or nothing right now. Off here. the top. I'm going to see Pork's reaction to this, actually. Yeah. Uh, he's like, yep. He gives it no. <laughs> he I gives knew it this is coming. Even though it's <laughs> off the top. Karakazam is not going to help. It actually gives. That's really bad because it gives more targets for removal. Mm. Uh, conceal's reasonable if you can clear mm. your opponent's board. The big thing. Oh, if Marcus Wall goes on her own minion. Oh. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to make it a bit harder. Ooh, that's nice, though. Not bad. So now she can get execute potentially here. Yeah. And Earthshock, Silence. well, it could on your own minion, probably. Yeah. 
And Mark of the Wild. Again, well, this would be very nice on the uh, kettle here, or the teapot. But that's not going to provide any sort of taunting. <laughs> she needs to actually somehow not to unstealth her. Uh. Unstealth her uh, broom there. Blood Warrior is not going to help. Bear Trap is not going to help. Snake Trap. Yep, she's just dead if Port My Pig goes face. Actually, if he hear powers face first, then he's not going to. Yeah, he's not going to have lethal because he's oh, going to hear power face first. I don't know, but her board's full, right? Oh, right. She has. Yeah. yeah oh. oh, feels bad, man. Yeah, full board, feels can't get the bear. Pretty bad. Oh, he's, he thinks it's Freezing Trap. <laughs> you still kind of have to do it, and you can just play your own. You right? Know, yeah. I, uh, there is an argument, though, because. because Fair, excuse me, Savage Roar kills you. Your opponent doesn't run Savage Roar, and he knows that, but you can get it off Raven Idol, so he's a bit concerned. Doesn't really want to give up a 7 10 taunt, you know? <laughs> yeah. So he might actually pass here, and it would give Chani wow. a way to come back, especially because she has a 4 4 taunt. This would be. This wouldn't be insane for him to pass here, because he could just yeah. die if it's a freezing trap. Right. Oh, man. So the mind games are real. <laughs> this is the power of secrets out of Yaw. Oh, but he gets an arcane giant, and that's just more stuff for mm. Chani to deal with. But he's not going to attack, so Chani is actually going to stay alive, at least for now. <laughs> and, yeah, not going to even play the, the Vile Teacher first. She's just saying, I need answers right now. I might need all the mana I can get. Is there anything she can draw here that's going to help her out? That's... Somewhat helpful. Yeah. Let's see if she goes for two or for, or excuse me, for three or for one. Uh, let's see. So she has six, uh, 10, 15 damage on board. So she might just want to go, I mean, and there's 18 health on her opponent's side. She might just want to go for three here and just play yeah. uh, something like a Thorson. I think you three onto the giant because you can just trade everything to the Anixia and not have it die. Actually, no, you can't. Actually, Oh, wow. Oh, the gang no. up. Yeah, she actually has to trade everything in. Um, and she can't trade it in her broom. I mean, I suppose she could if she just wants to provide the illusion that it's still freezing or something. Oh, yeah. But. Huh. And Port My Pig doesn't have Drew the Claw, so he can't actually charge in. He might have to just take the risk this time that it's freezing. Or swipe face. Or oh, swipe face, sorry, my bad. <laughs> He wanted to see what it was. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little tunnel vision there. I was thinking about, you know, how he's going to get out of this, but yeah. It happens all the time, man. All right, there you go. That's going to be win four, Port My Pig. Johnny put up a good fight, but uh, just going to be win here. Four, Port My Pig. Going to be up two to zero. Yeah, great little lead hit here set up for himself. Now Johnny has to claw her way back. Three wins in a row without losing any. So uh, that's, that's a pretty tall order for anybody. Well, he, she is going to be going up against the warrior, which is a dragon warrior, one of the best decks in the right. game. So, ah. yeah, going to be difficult. <laughs> we did see, actually, at the Onog Championships, a bit of a spoiler alert for you, but uh, we had Frozen come back from being three games down and winning against the dragon warrior. But at that event, Chalky was running the Bookworm rather than the Dragon mm. Crusher, which players these days have kind of identified as being not as good, especially when you're trying to kill your opponent. Mm. And so... Uh, yeah, and uh, that mistake has not been made. Well, mistake, uh, quote unquote. Maybe some players kind of like it. It's kind of like a line of play thing, right? Yeah. But, um, but uh, you know, some most players would say they'd rather have Dragon so the Crusher. Easy, it's so easy to get <laughs> seduced by like those new cards, which have right. synergy with already existing car, uh, deck archetypes, and you're like, you know what? This this has to be good. Like you're just kind of hoping. Yeah, it's exactly. Good, and then uh, you get reverse sweep. That that must feel like. Yeah, but unfortunately for Chani, Port My Pig has put in the Dragon and Crushers, and it is a very, it's a, a standard, you know, I'm going to kill your face deck. <laughs> yeah. It tops out at Rag, it tops out at Grom, and there's nothing like Deathwing, there's nothing like a Nixia, it's all just tempo all day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're looking forward to the next game. I wonder what Chani is actually going to pick here. Uh, obviously, you know, you could pick any one of these decks, really. They're not, none of them are that much more favored or less favored than the other one against sure. Dragon Warrior. So, could be anything. And maybe she just wants to play some Paladin. Yeah, Whatever. I kind of want to see the Paladin, you know, see all her decks. <laughs> Except for the banned one, of course. Yeah, the, the Paladin is a Nazoth Paladin. Kind of a, a little bit of a greedy one, in a, in a sense, because they're, the only taunt death rattle is Tyrion. 
There's right. nothing like um, the Infested Torrent, mm -hmm. which I do like actually. You're kind of you're playing it just just in case you play Nizoth at the end. You need some sort of taunt in the way. Yeah. But then you're just playing a four mana two three. Then you feel bad about yourself. So I do like the exclusion of that card. Do you think it's worth playing Chillmaw in these kind kind of decks just so you have that extra taunt? Like uh, even without the Dragon Synergy? It's almost the same thing as playing Infested Torrent because now you're playing mm -hmm. as having mana six six. So. Ah okay yeah. All right, instead of the Paladin, it's going to be the Druid coming back here for Chani. Again, no Arcane Giants. Instead, she has a Druid of the Claws, which works pretty well against... Uh, it looks a bit better against Dragon Warrior than it did in the last matchup. Mm, both guys really taking their time here. Yeah, Chani, you typically want to keep... Or you just want to mulligan for as much ramp as possible, mm -hmm. especially because she has one Meyer Keeper, so... She's not going to be, you know, it, it, picking up more than one piece of ramp is not going to, you know, bother her at all because she's not going to draw more ramp after that, essentially. Yeah. And uh, she's thinking about the living roots, which can be pretty useful, but you can't use them against fairy dragons, unfortunately, which is kind of yeah. the bane of Druid against oh, <laughs> Dragon Warrior. Right. And also, Pork is actually running two Ravaging Ghouls. Recently, we've seen a, run, a change from two to one <laughs> in order to fit in some of the new cards there, so... Uh, a bit of a risk of keeping the living roots, but you do want to have something to deal with those fairy dragons. And uh, for Portman Pig, threw away actually his Frothing Berserker. And uh, just going to go ahead and go face with the Alex Strauss's champion. This is kind of bluffing the Ravaging Ghoul. And Chani's already shaking your head saying, please don't. <laughs> right. Feels nice though to have wrath against that Alex Strauss's champion. It just feels so bad when that when that minion gets like two, three swings in. Right, <laughs> and you're just <laughs> yeah, you're just oh saying, uh, my goodness, Ravage oh. Nickel off the top. Oh wow, that can't feel good at all. And Chani is thinking, do I really coin into like in the situation? Hero power passing feels horrible, but yeah. also coining into Violet Teacher and having no play for the next three turns is also horrible. So. Yeah. She drew basically all of her late game. Other than Yogg, she's drawn literally the most expensive cards in her entire deck in her hand. Oh, sometimes it's just how the cookie crumbles, you know? It's just <laughs> the nature of a card game. Oh, we found Yogg! Oh. You know what I said except for Yogg? We found <laughs> Yogg. Literally every single, like, the most expensive cards. If you go yep. and look at her deck and scroll down to the bottom, it's going to read Yogg, Cenarius, and Nixia, Ancient War, Ancient War. <laughs> well, depending on what uh, what language you're in, sometimes the alphabetical order is different. Right. <laughs> Anyway, it's uh, it's unfortunate to say the least. Yeah, on the other side, Pork is just you know comfortably just innovate? playing on curve. Ooh, innovate would have a massive draw there. He could have innovate uh, war into coin mm. war. And the funny thing is, this looks like a good draw for her, but literally anything her deck would have been played could have been played there. Yeah, right. So it's not like it's not like oh she picked up Drake, right? <laughs> <laughs> Every single <laughs> card in her deck was playable there. Well, I guess it depends on how you look at it. Look at it. It's like glass half full, glass half empty. <laughs> the way I look at it is she's getting a lot of damage <laughs> hit in her face. <laughs> the way I look at it, uh, Malfurion is uh, getting pretty beaten up and bruised right now. Yeah, that really hurts. So poor my pig is looking at the situation. He saw a hero power on turn three into a Violet Teacher, which meant that she didn't coin it, and she just picked up the Drake off the top and insta-played it. Mm -hmm. So Portman Big is saying, I probably nick this execute. I could buy, or excuse me, I could tempo execute here, but probably not my best interest. Mm. And so yeah, he's going to take it out, I believe, with... What is he going to take it out with? Nothing, just going to go face. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, looks like he's confident that he can just... Yeah, he, he's saying that... Even if you clear, you have to clear my board and put up a taunt, and even then, it's basically impossible. He's yeah. he's expecting he's expecting this this ancient war, and he's already smiling. He's saying, you know, yep. doesn't matter. I have the execute in hand, and I'm just gonna kill you. Just go to face, and this Drake doesn't matter how much spell damage you have because I'm just gonna kill you. Puts up the well played, and Chani is going to be very sad about this because Port my Pig is moving on to the round of 32 with the dominant 3-0 victory. Unfortunately for Chani, she moves down to the lower bracket. Yeah, a little unfortunate there for our only female player. Still got a chance though. Just a few more matches than uh, if she would have stayed in the upper bracket. 
Yeah, a bit of an unfortunate draw for her, but uh, congratulations to Pork. He actually played pretty well in that match. I think yeah. both players played pretty reasonable. Maybe the deck decisions from uh, Chani kind of hurt her a bit because she could have gone for the Arcane Giants. But, mm -hmm. you know, she's targeting certain players here. And uh, honestly, the Jura Claw might help her get through the lower bracket a bit better because you don't have the, the top players, you know, theoretically you don't have the top players uh, mm -hmm. in the lower bracket, or at least less of them. So if they're playing maybe more aggressive decks, you can get the Drew the Claw in there and uh, not have to rely on getting, you know, the, the God Draw in order to get your Arcane Giant out. So, yeah. still, still uh, you know, hope out for Chani. Yeah, felt like she got a little unlucky though, you know, with, with the Hunter Mirror, she just got slightly behind in the beginning, as you said, you know, it's so hard to come back. And that last last game, just drew all, all of her, her late game, had couldn't play anything on literally three. all of it all yeah <laughs> everything so anything she drew she could have played from then on but it was just too little too late hopefully she has a little, little bit better luck in, in the lower bracket yeah looks like we do have a couple highlights from this match as short as it was and uh, we'll see how pork was able to dispatch uh china it looks like oh it's gonna be a, a minute away i guess we're, we're working on those highlights <laughs> as we talk but uh yeah just going through that matchup again it was it's pretty straightforward uh you know hunter versus hunter just lost that lost that uh, that mirror there mm -hmm. and you know again like I mentioned when the match was happening just when it snowballs it really snowballs in Hunter versus Hunter Druid versus Druid was always going to favor Pork because mm -hmm. of the way his deck was built and in that last game it was just sad to see yeah. <laughs> you know when you're when your hand is 10 9 9 7 7 and you're on turn two with no ramp it's um it feels bad then speaking of the lower bracket actually there's actually some really strong players already down there like mm -hmm. Pimpin Ho um, he fell down there in, in the first game of the day. Um, Edward Elric, another guy he's, he's, who's done really well in the Australian and New Zealand scene, he's down there as well. So uh, Chani's got a lot of competition down there. And, any, and anybody else who's uh, unfortunately down there, I don't envy their position at all. Yeah. That's the hardest part, right? Because if you fall, it's not necessarily the case that the stronger players are in the upper bracket. Usually it is. But if you fall down and other players also fall down, then you're really in trouble. So. Yeah. All right. Well, it looks like we're just going to not have the replays because <laughs> there weren't enough uh, there weren't enough highlights in that one. Just kind of a beat down on this side, sure. of Chani, unfortunately. So we're actually just going to go to a break. And coming up next, I believe we have the round of 32. Yeah. We should be getting into that round pretty soon here. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back after a short break. <laughs> 